While enormous progress has been made to protect children from lead poisoning, many cases of lead exposure still go undetected. Maryland is now testing all children at ages one and two years because there is no safe lead level. I was actually had a place of my own and that's when my three-year-old contracted lead paint poison. You know, I was pregnant and we moved into a new house because we needed more space. And sure enough, he caught lead paint poison as well. My experience with lead poisoning is that uh, my son, who's 19 months old now, at his 12 month, his annual visit, we had a mandatory lead test and it was revealed that he had lead poisoning. We were devastated. You're being told your child is being poisoned in a way that you didn't know how. No matter where you live, there may be old homes, there may be um, contaminated soil. It's not something that you can pretend doesn't exist. Lead stays forever. I don't know that we would have understood that he had lead poisoning until he showed symptoms. As it was, it caught it when it was higher, of course, than we would have liked, but he didn't have symptoms yet. So the lead testing guidelines allowed us to address the problem before it got much, much worse. Here in Maryland, lead is really not dead yet. We still see children in the inner city as well as suburbs with elevated lead levels. A lot of research has been done showing that elevated lead levels, even very low levels, can cause neuropsychological impairments, which include loss of IQ points, it can cause some problems with learning, attention, it also can affect a child medically too. We have found that there's no safe blood levels. The testing process is a very simple testing process. There's actually two levels. When you first go into the pediatrician's office, they may ask it that you just get a heel stick, which is just a couple drops of blood that they do in the office. But then if that heel stick reveals within a certain range, five or above generally, they'll ask for you to do a blood test. It's incredibly important and it's nothing that you should take lightly or assume you know the answer to. When we have a child with an elevated blood level, there's some things that we do here in our office. The first thing we do is repeat the test with the venipuncture just to confirm that the blood level is elevated. The second thing we do is we sit down with the parents and provide educational material for them. Again, they are very anxious to read and learn as much as they can. Another thing we do is an environmental survey that we go through to try to identify the source. Si su niño, si usted tiene pendiente de que su niño pueda tener contaminación con plomo, tiene usted que hacerse la prueba. Tiene que hacer la prueba de la sangre del niño para estar seguro que no lo tiene, sobre todo si vienen de otro país y no se ha hecho la prueba. Es importante que se haga la prueba estando en Medina. Lead can be found in all kinds of products, including in medicines that they be made in home, in pottery that many countries use for cooking, is in paint in the roof of the homes and also on the ground because the contamination of the land is very important too. The local health departments, they are going to help you. They are going to do the identification of the lead poisoning and the treatment. All health departments across the state of Maryland are all dedicated to lead hazard reduction. We have a unified case management protocol, so literally every health department has access to a specific protocol and we treat all of our kids the same way. We had a lot of help from the health department. They tested every single painted surface, every window frame, every door, and let us know where there was lead, even if it was underneath several layers of paint. The ceilings, the window seals, like I'm on everything now. If anything is peeling or any type of dust, too much dust in the house, drop ceilings. Since there's no safe level of lead and any introduction of lead into the body is harmful, we have to really band together to ensure that no child is exposed to lead by making houses lead safe and lead free from lead-based paint. I would really recommend if you're considering buying a home that you do lead testing before completing the purchase of your home. Don't say, oh, because I don't have the finances, I'm just gonna move in this place. Check on where you're moving. Get lead certificates. Make sure you're aware of your surroundings if you're living by a scrapyard. Additionally, people who already own a home, as you have contractors work on your home, that you make sure that they're following EPA lead safe guidelines. 
The resources that helped us after his lead diagnosis included our city and local health departments, state level housing organizations, and nonprofit organizations like Green and Healthy Homes Initiative. If you have a child with an elevated blood lead level, call your local health department, call the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, call the Department of the Environment. No matter where you call, we will all work together with you to help eliminate lead poisoning and address the specific needs of your child. The message I have for parents is to face this. It's a very scary diagnosis. It's not anything anyone wants to think about, but it can happen to you and it can happen to your child and you need to get them tested and you need to know about your home and you need to do whatever you can to keep your child safe. The most important key is education. Being educated on the signs of lead paint poison, what to look for, how to clean, and stuff like that. We have to start educating these parents on what to do for children who do have lead to keep it down, and we just have to educate.